There's a lot of tobacco in eastern North Carolina, and a lot of people work in the tobacco industry. That's right, a lot, and maybe more. And a lot of those people wear hats. In fact, it's the law. The law states, if you want to work in tobacco, you've got to wear a hat. Well, maybe it's an unwritten law. You know, like, if you want to be vice president, you don't have to be a spelling whiz. Something like that. Anyway, these hats take the place of hair on tobacco workers' scalps. After a few days, they shed them and new hats form in their place. Kind of like snakes shedding their skin. Last month, the tobacco market opened, and with it, the roadkill hat season opened. Never heard of it? That's because I just made it up. But I figure it's going to catch on real fast. You don't need a license, and you don't have to kill anything. I found all six of these beauties in less than a week. I could have found more, but I figured six ought to be the limit. You don't want to be greedy. Just take what you can use and release the rest. And here are a few tips to help you bag your limit of roadkill hats. Rural roads are the best areas to hunt. City streets lack the proper habitat required to attract roadkill hats. Hunt only during daylight hours, because at night it gets dark. Always approach the hat with care and use a stick to pick it up. Wow! You'd be surprised at the things that hide under hats. <laughs> and last but not least, always wash your roadkill before you wear it. You don't know where it's been. Some big ugly greasy guy might have shed it. Or it might be full of crawling, biting bugs that make you itch. Oh jeez. That's it for this week. Join me next week when I tell you if my dog's flea soap works on people. Why'd you put that salt? <laughs>